Here's a question. How much time did you spend on writing your Instagram bio? It's one of those things that no one really wants to spend a long time on, yet it might be one of the first things someone sees about you. And it can make the difference between keeping scrolling and wanting to know more about you. Today I will show you how you can write a great interior design bio on Instagram. A bio that is optimized to catch the attention of your ideal client. Hi there! If you are new to this channel, welcome! My name is Simona and I help interior designers market themselves better on social media. If you think that you could use some advice, subscribe and join our community. You can find even more advice there, along with tips for useful apps and tools and people like you that you can share your experiences with. Ok, let's get started! So how do you go about writing a great Instagram bio? As an interior designer who is looking for new clients, your bio should include a number of things. Your name and the name of your business, information about what you do and how you are different from other designers, your location and the area that you service, your contact details and a link to your website or a landing page if you have one. Let's have a look at each of these in more detail. This one should go without saying and probably doesn't need a lot of explanation. Having said that, if your business name doesn't include your actual name, I would still encourage you to use it on Instagram. Interior design relies heavily on personal connections and having a name and a face attached to your posts will make it easier for potential clients to relate to you. And here's a little note about your profile picture. Make sure it's a clear, professional photo of your face preferably with you smiling at the camera. It might be worth hiring a professional photographer to take your headshots and even do an entire branding photo shoot. It is an investment, but you can then reuse the photos in your Instagram posts, in your brochures or anywhere you present your business. This is the part where designers often struggle. It's not just about what you do, but about how your business actually differs from other interior designers. If you work in a certain niche, mention that. This can be anything from styling short-term rentals, specializing in historical renovations, focusing on small spaces and so on. Even if you don't have a specific niche, there are probably ways how to narrow down your business orientation. Perhaps you are a residential designer who works with busy families. Maybe you help retired clients to downsize. Or maybe you love creating dream homes with sustainable materials. You also probably have your signature style that you can describe in your bio. Are you a minimalist? A maximalist? Do you love French country or mid-century modern? All of this information will help your potential clients to assess whether you might be a good fit for them. So be sure to include it all in your bio. A side note, you have 150 characters available, so your bio needs to be to the point. If you are still struggling, you might appreciate the help of a professional copywriter who knows how to extract the essence of your business in such a short space. As most designers work with local clients, stating your location and the area you serve is extremely important. If you are open to traveling further afield, mention that as well. If you are a virtual designer who works with clients in any location, this is also something you should mention. A potential client might never make it to your website if they don't find your profile interesting enough. So take this chance to provide all the relevant information in your bio. Oh, and here's a tip about the location. When posting on Instagram, make sure that you use the geotagging function so people who are looking for designers in their area can find your posts more easily. Business profiles on Instagram have an option to add a contact button to their bio. This makes it so much easier for a potential client to call you or email you straight from Instagram. You do need a business profile to be able to do this, but there are also other benefits for converting your account, such as access to analytics, so I do recommend that you switch. If for some reason you are set on keeping a personal profile, you could link a contact form in the website link and add a call to action such as click the link to book a free discovery call in your bio. 
This, however, can take quite a lot of space in your bio, which is why having a simple contact button can be a better choice. The ultimate goal of your Instagram profile should be to get potential clients to contact you, either directly on Instagram or to come to your website. Sometimes a potential client might want more information about how you work or about other projects you worked on before contacting you. All of this should be on your website. If you don't have one, link to your online portfolio, whether it's on House, Pinterest or elsewhere. You can also link to a booking form for a free discovery call or to your blog or to your online shop. There are some great tools like Linktree that make it possible to nest several links under one. Just be sure to regularly update your links and don't put too many of them in there. Your potential clients might get overwhelmed with the choice. So pick just a couple of links that are most relevant to your business and that have the highest chance of people clicking on them. So, do you feel ready to rewrite your bio and make it stand out? I hope this video gave you some inspiration. If you would like even more advice, head over to our blog. If you would like some feedback on your Instagram profile, link it in the comments and I can share some ideas with you. And lastly, if you still haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it now. I will see you next time with a new video.